What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Next 90 with Nick. Very excited about today. Man, I got a smile on my face. If you're watching this on video, you can see. Uh, if you're not, you could probably feel my energy because I'm super excited about our guest today. You heard a little bit of that that Baton Rouge down south Louisiana accent. We've got my man, my brother, Mr. Colin Talley in the studio with us today. How you doing, Colin? I'm doing fantastic, man. Great to be here. You look and, good. And I appreciate the invite to be with you. Yeah, you know that California sun does you well, man. Yeah, yeah. I got a little <laughs> bit of that uh, rolling off the forehead. What, what's, what's very unique about this is uh, we actually have Colin's daughter, one of his daughters sitting in the studio with us and uh, it's got to be an honor for your daughter to be sitting here watching her dad and the the growth that you've had and uh, being able to hear your story and, and play witness to what living a challenge-based lifestyle means to you right yeah you know it is it's incredible to be able to do that and to actually have an opportunity to live it and then and not even try to have to teach your children they just see it in the way that you live and the way that you operate and the fact that you've made that choice and then all of a sudden that starts to spill over into their lives so it's you're not you're not teaching from a place of theory you're teaching a place from action because they've seen you do it over and over so it just becomes part of the family dynamic part of the family conversation yeah they can almost become this warrior uh warrior family right yeah exactly led by the 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 king the father the man uh so that's that's awesome uh, i i found this uh, wonderful photo um, uh, of you and your, your family. So why don't we, uh, why don't you give us just like your name, where you're from, uh, you know, wife, kids, all that kind of stuff, yeah. just so the audience knows who they're, who they're talking to besides just this beautiful Southern voice. There you go. There you go. So Cullen Talley, uh, basically been and lived in South Louisiana my whole life, Baton Rouge, Louisiana area, uh, okay. married to Lauren, uh, Talley for the last, uh, 16 years, this April 27th. So oh, just coming up here in a few coming weeks. Up, man. Yeah. That's yep. awesome. And then, uh, daughters, Sammy, who's 24, uh, Marky, who's 22, about to be 23. And then Riley Reed, who's here in the studio with us, who is 14. Well, Riley, we're, we're, I know you're off microphone, but we're so honored and happy to, to have you here. It's a dream of my day someday to have my kids, you know, being able to sit in the studio and watch uh, what their dad does. So that's really cool. Got a lot of respect for yeah, that. Yeah. So, you know, um, you and I have known each other for, for a long time. Yep. And, uh, you know, we've been through a lot to get a lot of growth, a lot of ups and downs. Um, you were there to, to, to uh, play coach to, to me and, and play support to me inside of Warrior Week 40. We had some some pretty special yeah, moments. For sure. Some pretty special moments Incredible there. Moments. And, and we'll get into that. Uh, but the audience doesn't know you. So, you know, we're going to kind of rewind the clock a little bit because yep. you're a, a, a very unique man. You've got a lot of wonderful accomplishments. Uh, you're a tremendous athlete. So I want to kind of rewind the clock a little bit and then yep. we'll start to pace forward. So, um, you know, you've been in the Baton Rouge area your whole life. Uh, give us a little background work wise, like what, what, yeah. you, what you've done in, in your work history prior to uh, the introduction to Wake Up Warrior and the Have It All lifestyle. Yes, yeah, so it started out um, in the retail space long ago, back when I was in college and stuff, and figured out pretty quickly that the margins and the, and the hours weren't something I was interested in and got into the payments business, so the, the credit card processing business, and started to learn a lot about um, innovation and technology there and just kind of got the bug around innovation. So at that point, got connected with uh, some early stage investors in and around uh, payments, uh, digital marketing, uh, at the time, mobile app technology. So as that was coming out, kind of, uh, you know, uh, mid 2000s stuff, a lot of things are starting to happen from a consumer standpoint as more and more got pushed to a mobile device. So it. it was always connected to payments and the innovation around payments, uh, retail, financial services, technologies. And so it was about, it was about uh, taking concepts that, you know, founders and inventors had come up with. And then my role was always, could we scale the, could we, secure investment, could we scale the technology, could we deploy it and, and continue to make a business out of that and then either commercialize that business or uh, have an event where we wind up selling the company. And then you, you would participate in that, right? From Correct. what I understand is they would, they would bring you in kind of as, I, I don't know what the title, but let's just call it a hired gun. Yes. And you, would, you, would, you would come in and you would kind of bridge that gap yep. between the inventor, founder, and then kind of bring all the pieces together, yep. make sure that the, the company has, had a, a scalable and profitable model, and then you'd participate in the upside and the, you got it. the exit, right? That's right. And it, and it really was as, as, much, as simple as literally going out and delivering the message to the market and, and getting the feedback and then feeding that back to the product teams, the innovation teams, uh, the executive team and so forth, as well as continue to see how we would train and build up a, a staff around that and what our what our sales structure need to look like, okay. what our support structure need to look like and those kinds of things. So you kind of were like a hub of communication, if you will, yeah. and, and, and being able to like bring all the, the parts, the sum of the parts to make the whole 
and then take the hole and go go sell it. Yeah, right? so kind of a sales business development with with an eye towards scalability and uh, valuation. And then you've done well, you know, obviously financially in yep. this in this model. Um, and not only on top of that, you're you were raising uh, three beautiful yeah, daughters, yeah, uh, which is, sure. which is awesome. Uh, but you're also an accomplished athlete. So how many uh, how many like triathlons have you done? And then how many Ironman specifically have you done? <laughs> so I don't have a count on triathlons. It's probably in the oh hell I don't even it could be fifty or sixty uh, for Ironman events. Fifty or sixty. Yeah, maybe as much as I'd have to go back and really look, but I bet it's in the fifty to sixty range, don't you think? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So uh, on the Ironman front specifically, so there's two distances in the Ironman okay. world. Uh, there's the half, which is called 70.3, and then there's the full Ironman distance. So 15 of those in total, eight of those being full wow. Ironman 140 mile distances. And have you ever done the Ironman World Championships? I have not. Have I have not, not qualified okay. for that. That is a. Uh, that is a. That's still on the list. It's going to be on a ninety day target, right? Still on the list. It's <laughs> it's more on the the year target than the ninety day. But <laughs> well, you have to. But it, oh, but my my targets always build. There toward you that. go. See, that's what I was looking for. Is, yep. the, is the ninety day targets will set the tone yep. Yep. for in order for you to accomplish that that bigger thing. So, Correct. working like a like a dog and 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 uh, you know helping these businesses get off the ground and conceptualize raising three daughters. 70 triathlons, eight of which are, are full-blown Ironmans. What, by the way, was your, your best time in the, uh, the Ironman? Uh, nine forty eight. That's smoking. Yeah, that's, uh, it that's was smoking. one heck of a day. Yeah, so, that was that was putting all put it all together on one day and moving. That's great, man. So just to put it into perspective, um, the the Ironman. So those of you that don't know, why don't you give us the rundown? It's 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 uh, swim, bike, run. But what it. are the distances? Swim is two point four miles. Two point four miles followed by one hundred and twelve miles on a bike. Followed by the marathon. The marathon twenty six point two. So just to put it into perspective, he said nine forty eight. I've I've run one marathon in my life. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of proud yeah, about that. Go. And uh, my time on that marathon, just the marathon, was four hours and 15 minutes. So in the double of my time, you actually <laughs> rode a bike 125 miles, and you uh, and you managed to swim. Yeah, well, I don't want to make you feel real bad, Nick, but I ran <laughs> 334 that day uh, after I had swam two and a half uh, miles, after I'd ridden 112 miles of bike. So I had done uh, about uh, six hours of cardio when I started the marathon, and, you beat and me, I still whooped jazz. Yeah, you, you beat me by 45 <laughs> minutes. All right, so I've got a new 90-day target. It's, uh, <laughs> to do better than 3.30 just in the marathon. So, like, sounds like life was pretty good. So, yes, uh, in the sense that when you looked at it, it should be. Okay. And um, I mean, I, if I'm going down the boxes, I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, exactly. like doing okay financially. Yep. Like, you know, I, I don't, we didn't really touch on how great the home life was or wasn't. Um, but, uh, you know, picturesque wise, it, Very looks, solid. it, it looks fine. Very solid. Um, you know, athlete. But then, like, there had to be something because, you know, the people that have been listening to this podcast, they know that us men that have come to the doors of, of Wake Up Warrior, to this have-it-all lifestyle, to the challenge-based living, there was, there, was something, there was something missing. So, like, what, what brought you to the place that you and I actually could meet each other through this movement called Wake Up Warrior and the have-it-all lifestyle? Yeah, so I uh, didn't know anything about Wake Up Warrior. Uh, didn't know anybody in it. Uh, January of 2016, I'm uh, hanging out at my house. Some, you know, multiple glasses of red wine into it's it, normally, maybe a bottle or two into some red wine. Normally, how it happens? Yeah, and uh, came across a video. And um, you know, I, I, you know, it, it's funny because when you look back, you, you can see it more clearly than you can at the time. At the time, Always. there was something about this idea of having it all. This idea of challenge-based lifestyle, this idea that just spoke to me in that short video, and then I just kind of dove in from there, watched more videos within a couple of days. At that exact moment in your time, outside of uh, you know, I know you'd like to drink some nice wine, so yep. I, I would even hate to wonder what you were drinking at that time because yeah. it'll just get my palate uh, <laughs> salivating here. But uh, you, where were you at in your life? Like, where were you like emotionally? Where were you, you know, spiritually? Yeah. Where were you with your wife? Your connection with your children? Yeah, so I was uh, physically I was injured. So okay. I had trained for all these races, and I had run into some injuries from overuse that were not healing as quickly as every doctor said they should, and they kept coming. And even with rest and recovery, they still kept coming. So physically, I didn't have that. And so Ironman for me for a long time was an ability to to prove to myself 
at the finish line basically only that I was a great man mm. because I was doing something so few people had done and then doing it at a speed even the people that do it don't do it at. So there was this, so that, all this that, validation. That was your, yeah, that was your, your kind of measuring stick, if Correct. you will, that you were like a notch above the, the right. rest of the men in, in your quote-unquote right. sphere of influence. Right. So could I, if I could do that, then somehow in that. But the problem was that finish line experience, sometimes the, the, the connection of that would last seconds or minutes or maybe days, and then it would be gone, and then I'd spend a year chasing it again. Mm. So that had happened. I'd been through all of those. Um, spiritually, I had just come off actually a year of reading the entire Bible. Wow. Uh, a daily deal, going yep. through the whole, which I had never done. I'd always been around Now, church. Were, you, were you a believer in God? Like, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Believer in God, uh, raised Catholic, <clears throat> educated Catholic, mo- mo- more of a Christian. I, we were definitely Catholic, but, mo- but, but not super, super heavy there. Yeah. Um, and I was just, I didn't feel connected. I um, was frustrated with my own spiritual experience, and I have to to be clear, like, even in that experience, I was like, oh, was it amazing? And the truth was, I was proud that I had done the work mm-hmm. to get through the entire Bible, Bible for the first time in my life, but I didn't feel like I had found really any answers. Okay, so it's more I like mean, I had read some stories. Checking a box type of thing, or I, yeah, I mean, there was some discipline associated with it, but I didn't yeah. feel like I had any, there was not any real, there was a couple of moments, but for the most part, I didn't really have any spiritual life. It doesn't mean the Bible's bad, it doesn't mean it wasn't a, a worthwhile endeavor, right? but I wasn't different spiritually. Okay, so, so so we got so we got you're injured, uh, yep. so that's taken from you. So this measuring stick that that you were kind of going through life with yep. is, is taken from you. So it's kind of probably forcing you to be introspective. So you you pick up the Bible, maybe try to find the fulfillment there. Go through the Bible in a year. You know, you, you learned some stuff. You had the discipline, but you don't necessarily feel like it kind of anchored to your heart. Uh, where are you at from a, a work work position and? Financially, where you at? yeah. So financially, we were uh, have always been very been disciplined financially, so solid, but feeling like just kind of on the edge, mm-hmm. like almost there, almost there, almost there. We had just uh, built a beautiful home that we have. I've seen uh, it. It's, it's, amazing. it's it's fantastic in every detail. So we've got this gorgeous home. You know, we've moved into it. Um, you know, a few months before I see the video, and so and then. Lauren and I are in a really solid spot relationship-wise, ha- had been for a long time. The girls are doing well. But just inside, I just, like, again, it was, I didn't even realize at the time, now it's clear how much I was dying and how mm-hmm. much I was struggling, how I felt like I was just in a loop. constantly in this loop that I couldn't get out with it. it was body, spiritually, even inside of our relationship, it was good, but I wouldn't say it was great. Um, and then business-wise, like, never fulfilled. Mm. Like solving some problems. I think, and and you may not have kind of linked this, but I'm kind of having it right now, just knowing you as long as I have, and then thinking about it. So I think the business thing probably for you was a lot like the triathlon, yeah. right? Where you got to the finish line, and then you're like, oh shoot, like that was cool, but what next? You know, because it was that arrival or that that destination, and you're like, okay, I, the fulfillment was kind of in that growth, and then you got there. Now you're looking for the next race, the next uh, startup, the next yep. thing that Colin could come into and and pour himself into. For sure, and you know, the other thing that was clear too was I was I kept setting myself up in a position, but I was never the guy. I was one of the guys. Mm. I was in a position where, and now again, it's clearer. But uh, at the time, it was a lot of frustration and angst. Yeah. But I was putting myself in a position where I was only able to lead to a point. Right. Which then caused me to be in this kind of circle of I'm never getting to do fully what I want to do because I'm not You're in always a position on someone to pull that agenda. off. Yeah. Okay. So you know, so like we're the the, the uh, athletic thing is kind of curbed. Uh, you're diving into the spiritual thing. So you're, it seems to me like you're kind of in this like exploratory yeah. time of your life. It's not bad, right? It's not no. bad. And by probably by most human being standards outside looking in, they're like, dude, that guy is, he's got it all. You yeah. know, he's got just built this beautiful home. He's got a beautiful family. You know, marriage is on fire. Yeah, he can't work out, but, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's got it inside of him. So yeah. uh, would you say you were growing, not growing? No, I was stagnant. And what, was, what, it had been stagnant for a while. And I like, and I like that word because I used that word in a previous podcast. You know, like we're overlooking this this lake right here, right? Yep. And that lake is moving. They put fountains in it to keep it moving. So what happens in a man's life, or specifically yours, when he becomes stagnant? Well, for me, you just start to contract. I mean, there's no there. It's a, it's a little bit like fitness. You're either getting fitter or getting less fit. Like there's not a there's not a status point. <laughs> so even when I say I'm stagnant, that just means I'm shrinking. Yeah. Like I'm trying to hold the space of what is and what I've created. 
But the truth is, in trying to just hold that space and not expand and not grow, I'm shrinking because there's no challenge, there's no effort, there's nothing that I'm headed toward. Yep. It's almost just protection of what is. And as you protect and protect and protect, it just kind of implodes on itself over it's like time. It's trying to grip on to say right. Yeah. That's right. And that and that was my experience. I mean, the, the the challenge was I'm sitting here and I'm looking at my life and I'm saying, if you would have told me I was gonna be here five years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, I'd have been like man, this is awesome. All right. That's the, you have this much money, you make this much money, you, you get the this house, situation with your family, you've done you this. this home, you've done all these things, uh, you know, with, uh, with your body. Like, I'd have been like, dude, you're going to be, you're going to be like so happy. And so the disconnect was the fact that I was there and yet I felt this like hollowness, this mm-hmm. contraction, this stag- Isn't stagnation. Isn't it amazing how, how that can happen? And yeah. That's a big distinction that I want to make that I want you guys to kind of listen to is that, you know, the he w- he had become this man that he thought he, he thought he wanted to be, or he actually became this man that he dreamt of being. But then when he got there, like there was no future vision, there was no future forward of this vision of the next version of himself that right. he had become. Uh, be so on the surface, yes, everything's great. But see, some people think it's money, some people think it's this, and it's it's not necessarily in that. It's in the the expansion of the man, the Correct. expansion of the woman that is gonna where you're gonna find the fulfillment. So you you you're kind of in this state of stagnation. You uh, crack a bottle of wine you fall down you fall down a rabbit hole and I found out fell down that same rabbit hole <laughs> and so you you land on the the doors of wake up warrior yep. you get your ass on a plane you fly all the way to the the beaches of Laguna yep. um, which is a long trek for you yep. now you leave your family and your your, your beautiful daughters behind uh, tell me about that experience in like you know just in that one week what happened to you it just changed the way that I see the world. It opened up the ability for me to question things that I didn't even know I could question or would question. So it just opened a possibility. Like just in those couple of days, it it it, it shifted enough in me that I became comfortable to ask questions before mm-hmm. I was unwilling to ask. And there, were those questions of yourself? Were those Absolutely, of, yeah. Of, so they were, I, they were all for myself, right? Yeah. Like I, I was very clear, like... I didn't need anything else on the outside. I, f- I was very clear. The answers that I needed were from within. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And and so uh, you come out of of Warrior Week, right? And then yep. the first thing that they lay down, the gauntlet that they lay down, is what a, a ni- challenge. A challenge. Yep. A, a nine. How long of a challenge? Ninety day challenge. Ninety day challenge. And it's across the, what all all areas, all, right? Yep. Which is the body, body being, being balance, balance, and business. business. Yep. So let's walk through. I want to walk, talk about that first challenge, and then kind of how those have stacked up because you just accomplished some something really freaking big, and uh, something I'm super proud of uh, of you for. And I know that you're proud of yourself. So I want to get to that. But yep. what I want the audience to understand is that, like, you just decide and you start like with a, a 90 day challenge, yep. and you commit to your body. Your being, which is your spiritual connection, your balance, which is your relationship with your wife and your children, or your spouse and your children, and then your business, like how much money you're going to bring in and how right. much money you're going to take home. Yep. So, what were some of those big challenges? Were they like these grandiose things? I'm going to, you know, uh, compete in the Ironman <laughs> World Championships, or so. Uh, initially, uh, there was a mix of things. So, uh, initially with body, it was simply just to get healthy. So, there's yeah. a couple of things that I really had to commit to from a rehab, and then just analyzing, like, I had an issue with my knee. Well, I needed to see a doctor. I needed to get clear. I needed to have surgery. So that's not a very sexy No, outcome, especially right? having done all these races right. and stuff. Like, it's it sounds like a real kind of a but wuss that's, challenge. But, but that's a it was meaningful what was required. challenge. Exactly. It's a yeah. meaningful challenge because that, had you not done that, you don't get back on track right. physically. Right. So what's, what, what was one for, uh, for balance? So for balance, uh, originally, I'm trying to remember what the original balance was. I th- uh I think it was just some trips because we had always done, uh, we had not always done trips as a family, but really looking at time for Lauren and I specifically and time for the family, family. specific. I think we're, the, we're some of the early ones. It's been so long now <laughs> uh, that, that that it was just really carving that out and deciding that was an investment I was going to make regardless of. Because at the time when I was at Warrior, I had taken a package from my last gig and I was I was like, I wouldn't That's work right, it. So to make, the, to make a choice that in the midst of no current income, right. uh, financially stable but no current income, to say, no, I'm going to make an investment in my wife and I. I'm going to make an investment in my family. We're going to do these things. And you were making an investment in yourself. Correct. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Because yeah. that's what Warrior is about, is making that investment yep. in yourself. Yeah. And then and then so business, like, was it just to figure out the next stage of life? Yeah. So the b- business at that time was, yeah, to, to figure out and define the next deal, uh, okay. which I did as, as an early one. Obviously, as you move along, it starts to become more about revenue, you know, 
take home cash, you know, other metrics associated right. with the business that may be. Uh, but, but at that time it was really defining the deal and getting it, getting my next, uh, deal put in place in that, in that first challenge. So I'll, I'll never forget, uh, Colin, uh, you came in, what was your original warrior week? April 20. So two years ago this month, All right. So April, 2016. Okay. So you were, what week was it though? 27. So 27, I was 22. So Colin came in, uh, shortly after I was in September of, of 15 yep. and, uh, like we, you and I sat together, uh, on, on the bus ride on the bus, yeah. and I, I think it was on the bus ride in out June. to, yeah, out to yep. uh, Lake Elsinore. And like, I really felt a, a bond and connection mm-hmm. to Colin. And I didn't really even know anything about this man. I didn't know anything about his background or anything. And we have this, uh, we had the, what we called the Frogman competition. So we'd always start <laughs> off every every convention or, or ga- gathering. So we, we would meet up as men every 90 days. And we'd talk about what we accomplished in the, in the previous 90 days and right. what we were going to accomplish in the, the next 90 days. And so, you know, I'd sit next to Colin. And you don't know, like, you know, someone's background. And we had this w- Waterman competition. And this dude comes out and just crushes everybody. Uh, well, at the time, I, because I hadn't been able to train, I'm a li- <laughs> I don't look like I was in shape. I don't look like I can go. But once well, you you're put physically down- different now. But I mean, like, yeah. you're, you're out of shape as most people's in shape. Yeah. So just yeah. to put it in perspective, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So you're carrying you. a little bit extra weight. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And he comes out and just smokes everybody. Yeah. I'm like, God damn, I was sitting next to the winner. <laughs> I, I should have just held onto your, your feet. There you go. Um, so, uh, but I've seen so much growth in you. Mm. And I think it's attributed to you, like, really adopting this, this challenge-based living. For sure. And pushing yourself. I yep. mean, you have pushed yourself to to whole to whole new levels. So what are some of the, the the bigger things that you've done or bigger things you've been able to accomplish living your life 90 days at a time? So the bigger things that I've done, uh, it, it's just it, it's so funny because living that way, it really does come back to the the daily, the weekly piece that gets to those kind of 30 day, 60 day benchmarks that get you to the 90 days. So I always think about this challenge based lifestyle actually in the smaller chunks. Mm-hmm. But what it's really allowed me to do is physically last year was able to get back to the starting line of Ironman, which was great. Oh, awesome. The coolest part about that last November for that challenge was unlike in times past, it was really the integration of all four sides. Cause mm-hmm. I used to think about the challenges as individual components. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this was one of the times I think I really put the plan together in a way that was holistic. Everything kind of touched each other. And they other. supported one another. Mm-hmm. And so like part of it was, could I get back to the starting line without being a butthead to my, to my wife and girls right. because I'm training so much and I need rest and I need space and all right. this kind of stuff. So to get back there, and one of the things I discovered in that process was the man that showed up at the starting line because I showed up last year in November like trying to get myself anxious at the beginning of the race. And I, and I stood there and I was like, I'm not nervous. I'm not anxious because I'm not chasing the finish line. The mm. man that showed up at the starting line that day wow. at the end of the challenge, that was just the celebration mm. of what the challenge had been and the path had been to get back to that point. So I didn't have anything to prove at the finish line. So part of that 90 day challenge was the arrival at the end was the celebration of what had been created over that period that's, of time. That's beautiful. It gives, gives me the chills just hearing that. So, you know, you were chasing this man and, and, you know, never really being able to catch him because Correct. there was always a new race and there was always a new, yeah. you know, something. And, you know, now you had grown into this man that's like content right where he was. Yeah. Right where he was. Yeah. Knowing that there was six, seven hours worth of work ahead of you. Knowing that there's six, seven years of work ahead of you. Knowing yeah. that there's, you know, all these days ahead of us, but like just all the work that you've done created to that point allowed you to be so physically present that the anxiety of what you're about to go do was gone. Yeah, and it was just, just the depth of the spiritual connection that I feel now, this this oneness that I talk about a lot with what I've experienced now in my spiritual connection that I just have totally simplified that. So for me, over this period of time, all the challenges, the investigation I've done inside of church, outside of church, through meditation, through other uh, spiritual experiences that now I have this oneness yeah. that I live with constantly and work on and participate in and invest in. And then in my, you know, inside my my family, my marriage, the fact that Lauren and I have grown, you know, because it was one of those things where my marriage was was really, really good, like one of the best that I knew around us. Right. And so then this the idea that we could be more, right. and that I could find ways to invest in each of my daughters specifically and collectively uh, in the midst of that, and then also produce as a businessman and it's have crazy. that all happen together. It's not easy and it takes, you know, it's like, you know, to, to, to try to move all of those at one time. But the only way was to take on these challenges. It was the only way to pull it off. But let's, let's kind of rewind. And how did you read the Bible? Uh, day at a time. Exactly. You know, like, like looking at the Bible, like I've never done that. It's daunting. It's huge. Right. But you did it one day at a time. You could commit to what? 
one day at a time, yeah. right? That's what this challenge-based living is. It's just yep. one day at a time doing something that's going to perpetuate you forward. It might be something as simple as just going to see the doctor and getting your knee healed. Yep. Like, had you not done that, you were not at the start line Correct. of the Ironman, and we're not having the same conversations as bringing chills to my body, you know? Yep. So that's what it's all about is this, this stacking mechanism that happens as a result of doing the work every single day. You know, and so uh, I had the privilege of sharing a stage uh, with you and uh, your your beautiful wife Lauren and my wife Nicole. Yeah, and like that was a great moment. I don't know what you felt, but actually I shouldn't even say that. I do know what you felt because I, I was sitting back, you were beaming ear to ear, and just tears streaming down your yeah. face in, in in pride. Yeah, uh, she was like uh, she was like nervous yeah. as all hell. Yeah, and then she gets up there and just Slams fucking it. crushes it, crushes, crushes it. it. I mean, I, that was a proud moment for me. Yeah. It had to be a proud moment it for was. you. And I know for our wives, for them to sit there and see like what was happening ar- around us to the other men, yep. like was was a pivotal moment. Did that kind of bring you and Lauren closer, if that was even possible? It, yeah, it did, and um, it helped her recognize the work that she's done <clears throat> and the way in which her support has has supported me. And that's the one thing I always share with her because she's such. A supportive person like this what i've created and what we've created isn't possible with with without her being who she is right. and so uh yeah it was an incredible moment and then for her to realize that um she is unique in her own way in the way that she loves and supports us so it was, it was a beautiful moment to share yeah and uh, and then to have the feedback she got from the men in the audience about how to connect with their wives and how because there was one moment she shared she said uh um the things that Cullen started to, as he started to work on himself, he started to see things in me. And as he started to see those things in me, then I could finally believe them about myself. Wow. And so it was just really powerful, powerful to see statement. that I, and so there just becomes this feat, this loop, this constant loop between, you know, I'm doing my work on me. So then I recognize something to her, which helps her grow, which helps me grow, which helps her grow. And so there's just and this, it helps, this constant. Helps, it helps your daughters that's grow, right. you know, and like she's, she's, she's learning love and she's learning how to, to receive love and give love, you know, from your example to Lauren and, and, and vice versa, you know, so you, like you said, this just kind of becomes a, a way of life yeah. for, for you and your, uh, your family, you know, to have your daughter sitting there hearing these words that are coming out of your mouth, like, you know, she probably realizes it now because she's a mature young lady, but it's going to anchor in even more as she starts to get into relationships. So that's super powerful. Right. And then so uh, so one of the things that uh, that uh, Warrior did is that said, you know what, like Colin has his own voice. Uh, not only is it beautiful and Southern, but like he has a specific angle and a specific audience and a tribe that are going to just attach to him and his his his, uh, his words. Same thing with me, this podcast. This podcast resonates with different people than it does with Garrett and so on and so forth. So it says, you know what? We're going to allow these men that have been living this way to be doing this work, to throw their hat in the ring and say, I believe in this so much that I want to give it away because I know the more that I give it away, the more that I ultimately ultimately lead it. So Colin... Uh, has something that I am in the hunt of. He has a beautiful ring on his uh, his right finger, and it's the uh, the certified warrior trainer ring. So, what number were you in the uh, the line of, of men who've come f- come forth and become a certified trainer? Set number seven. Number seven. So he's the number seven person in the entire world to uh, put in the work and and earn that ring. And uh, what does that ring represent to you? What does that mean to you? It, it represents me truly becoming a four dimensional man. And the reason is, is during this challenge, I took on my final prep for Ironman Arizona last year. I did, uh, I went back to Warrior Week 39 by choice, uh, which I didn't have to repeat, but but wanted to, because I knew that as new men came through, I wanted to have experienced what they went through. So I went back to Warrior Week, assisted at your Warrior Week from a spirituality standpoint. Um, We did some very specific things as a family, again, traveling together and so forth. And then uh, continue to uh, create in my business, and then and then do what was required. And this was a massive amount of work, right. hundreds of hours right. of work right. uh, in the midst. So all of that at the same time. So the thing that I'm most proud about this is that I, I, it wasn't the only thing that I was doing; it was one of the things, things. and then it got integrated into all of that at but the that's, same time. That, 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 that's like a hub, and then the, the spokes just make that yeah. that that wheel like spin so much more efficiently. Right. And so, like for those of you that are thinking like, ah, I don't have time, I I, I can't do this. Like Colin just smashed that frame for you because you know he he was training for an Ironman, putting in hundreds of hours of of work and research and videos for to become a certified trainer, spending a, a one week like 
fully checked out uh, into his own Warrior Week. Another week fully checked out, s- assisting at Warrior Week 40, which is what I went through. Yep. Um, and then also leaning into his family. And you had started like a, a new gig. You know, I know that you started like a right, new gig. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally, t- yeah. totally blanked out. Yeah, I literally started a new gig when we, when and we I started don't, And I don't August. know how much you want to get into that, but like I know that like it was, uh, you were kind of on the fence and, and you just really surrendered to like th- your voice and your own power. And you said, hey, if it's going to be me, then it's going to be this. And you were able to get like, Everything you wanted, yep. correct? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I, I got very specific about what I wanted out of that deal, the structure, timing, so forth, my location, how much travel, and so forth. And then, and then, but literally, as we went into this decision, I, that had, was not all clear. So this decision was made before that was clear. That's crazy. But yet, I trusted the fact that it was. But happen. but you knew that that was what you wanted. Yes. Yeah, you knew that ring. So now Colin is a, a certified warrior trainer. He can actually uh, teach this doctrine to other men. He can charge other men uh, for this um, uh, this uh, uh, curriculum. Um, I'm on my way. I've, I've, I actually have been procrastinating. It was, it's been a part of my 90-day challenge twice now. Uh, I'm on my third We're one. We're going to fix that, right? Oh, dude, we've already, we've already, like, just the mere fact that I'm on this podcast, right? Yeah. Like I have radically changed, and it's only been uh, this is you'll be episode number I think 16 or something like that. But we won't even this won't even air for a couple of weeks. But like just the fact that I got to get on here and I got to talk about it. I mean, we've been in here day and night, like putting in the hours. So I know what what is required to get right. that, and I'll have it by the end of this month. So awesome. Yeah, and I, I'll be proud to uh, not be number seven, but to be up on that stage. Yeah, Whatever right. number I I am is the number I was meant to be. Yeah, exactly. And so Colin uh, has now been, he's the second man, or third man, I think, to come back and actually be one of the lead trainers at a Warrior Week, yep. right? Yep. So he's just, he's out here with his family, but it, last week we wouldn't even been able to reach this man because yep. he was fully immersed in Warrior Week 46. Now talk about that experience because you've, you've, you've gone to two Warrior Weeks, yep. uh, 27 and, and 39. Uh, you did uh, assist on 40, which I was, which I was in, um, and then you did uh, 40, now you've done 46. So you've had the opportunity to be in the trenches, you have the opportunity to be kind of on on the sidelines, but now you were on the front lines. Yep. Like, tell me about that because you and I haven't even had a chance to talk about. Yeah. That. So it was uh, just an amazing experience. So it 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 was clearly one of the most rewarding things you could ever do to participate and contribute in that way directly right. uh, to so many families. And that started with the lead up, right? So we've got this whole with you know inside of Warrior Week now. There's this whole basically 30 day lead up process, and it, you know even in that, being able to invest in the men, help them break through some stories push them and get them ready and prepared um, was just an incredible privilege, but it also was an opportunity for me to expand right. because it was on me. Right. Right? Like I had to decide when to push, when to pull back, when to come alongside and when to, you know, torch Open their up. world. Absolutely. Right. And so that was part of that whole lead up and then stepping into that warrior week experience and then, and then knowing what was on the line for these men. So this, the seriousness with which you show up is one thing to, I mean, to be in, it's great. Like you're only focused on you right. to assist. Like you don't have to hold the frame. You don't have to hold the space. As much, and then yeah. you, you're, you're invested in the result, but not in the same way. So there was a, there's a, there's a heaviness to it. Sure. Uh, there's certainly a, it's very complicated. Um, it takes a tremendous amount of energy. Um, there's a lot of highs and lows. So it was incredible to to guide 14 men there with That's with crazy. Coach Sam and the rest of the team. But to 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 have to have own the lead up responsibility and then and then be that face for them. And now you're gonna be you're gonna be taking these men on the next 90 yes. days, right? Yes. So, so yeah. So part of that is is so Colin has has you know gone through the whole gauntlet. He's 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 got his uh, certification. He did a, a lead up with these men to get them mentally prepared kind of re-engineering their mindset, yep. shattering through these limiting beliefs and these stories that are holding them back, getting them on the path to telling the truth, yep. right? And then, and then he gets them into Warrior Week, which is a crazy experience that we can't even begin to describe unless you experience right. it for so, yourself. And now, this man who two years ago uh, probably didn't even know what a 90-day challenge was... No, hell no. Uh, ...is now going to lead a group of men, of 12 men... Yes. Uh, ...on their, their first but I will guarantee you not their last 90 day challenge. And like now he will set his outcomes uh, for himself, but I'm sure part of it is to get these guys all the way through their, yep. their, their 90 day challenge. Absolutely. And the amount of growth that you'll have on the other side of that is insane. And so that's what people don't realize is that it's like rungs of a ladder, you know, like each right. 90 days is a rung. And if you don't look down and you don't look back, you're like, wow, all of a sudden I'm, you know, 3000 feet off the ground. 
Yep. Yeah. So that's cool. That's that. I, I, I can't tell you how proud I am of you for you, for man. having do that. You know, I've I've as as a guy who was in the game six months before. You know, now like the you kind of see the possibility in a in a man. You know that yep. that came before you. So that's what this is all about. For sure, and it's it's so it is so interesting because once you've started, you, you get to a point you have to go through your own challenges. Yeah. So, so there's kind of two paths. I think some people want to lead way too soon, <laughs> like they haven't proven that they can right. do it, right? And so right. it's about doing it, doing it, doing it, and then you lead. But then when you get to lead and you choose to lead or you're called to lead, it raises your standard. Because if not, you're not living in integrity. Exactly, you're full of shit. And so it's like if you're not gonna if you're not gonna do it. And you can't lead it. And as you lead it, it just requires you to grow. So the yeah. beautiful part is like, even as I step into my, my next challenge and the fact that I'm leading these guys, I'm like, shit, man, you I got to like, gotta, I really got to ball it up. You know yeah, what I'm gotta, saying? I got to step, step it up. up. Dude, that's this whole thing. Like this morning, I mean, like we live by a code, which means we tell the truth. I got my eyes opened at 5.15 and I was like, get up, get up, go for a run, do your core four. And I, I fell back asleep. And so what did I do? The first thing I did when I got here today is I did a stack on it, you know? Yeah. And, and actually the beautiful gift that came out of the stack. And I told you guys, the stack is like this, this internal vomiting of everything that you're right. stuffing in was that I, uh, right now I'm using my kids as, a, as an excuse rather than motivation. Mm. And dude, that, that reframed the whole thing for me. The fact that I have two young kids and I'm like, Oh, I'm so tired. I can't get up because the kids are up. Like I'm using that as an excuse rather than I got two young kids. I want my kids to be in studio someday watching me. Right. I want them to know that dad is living like the, the life that he preaches and dude, that's how reframed everything for me today. You know, that's the beauty Beautiful. about, about this whole movement. Yeah. So, uh, we're, we're, we're running a little bit short on time here and I know that I appreciate you coming down cause I know that you got an extremely busy schedule. Yeah, what would you to tell it. to people who are listening to this that, you know, are kind of on the fence to the, like chunking their life down to 90 days at a time and living a challenge based lifestyle? Yeah, the reason you're not doing that today is because you are unwilling to give yourself a shot. I mean, you literally are unwilling to give yourself a shot because the 90 day increment is there for a reason because it's manageable, it's livable, you can measure against that. The problem with these year long goals is you never get there. Like you never, I mean, it's like these big, I mean, all these strategic plans right. we do in business right, and all right, this right, stuff, right. and then something changes and like they're you know, throw them out the window. But the, but the, the reason you avoid it is because you're unwilling to give yourself a chance to do it. So it's, it's literally that simple. Just choose to step into a challenge. You will be amazed in just the decision when you decide, you know what, I'm going to do this, and you're going to do it across all areas, not just one. Because typically what happens is people will do one and then neglect the others, and they get that plate spinning over here, <laughs> and then they turn around and run over here, and that one falls on the ground. The whole point here is to be able to do this holistically, across four key domains and do it in a way that's exciting, challenging, and it forces you to go, okay, shit, what would I have to do to make that happen? Who would I have to become, well, as we talk about absolutely. so often, you know, who would I have to become to be that? And so there's this pulling from you. There's this, you know, there's a book I read years ago by Dr. Wayne Dyer, you know, inspiration, inspirational living. And he talked about the difference between inspiration and motivation. Mm. And I think so much of the time we're in this motivation, motivation. kind of cheerleader mode, yeah. motivate, motivate, motivate. A 90 day challenge is really about inspiring you. It'll pull something from inside you forward. You'll feel like a thread connected to something in the future that comes back, connects to your heart and pulls you forward each and every day. And so that's the difference to me in the 90 day lifestyle. The 90 day challenge lifestyle is that there's this pulling forward, this inspiration versus kind of the rah-rah motivation right. that we see that typically is only focused in one area. Oh, I'm going to lose weight. Oh, I'm going to go to church. Oh, oh I'm, I'm going to spend time money. with my family. Oh, I'm going to grow my business. But they're never looked at in whole. <clears throat> and so there's this emptiness, which is, I think, what I experienced so many times because I would get one empty, one empty, one empty. And so then you're just, at some point, you're just like, fuck it. I'm not going to do anything. I mean, I'm like, why? Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm, I am damned regardless of what I do. Right. Yeah. So uh, can you imagine, like, one, uh, your life without 90-day challenges? No. And then can you imagine, like, n like not having been introduced to this? Dude, that's like, where, where, like would, when where, I think where about would you be? That, well, it's the definition of hell to me is, mm. is to have to even consider that thought. Wow. Like the idea of me not being connected to this and what it's created in my life for me, for her, for my other girls, like that is truly, when you want to talk about what, what is hell, that is hell to me, the thought of that life. Wow. 
So don't take it from me, people. The reason why I have guests on my show, the reason why I have men like Colin here, is they are living proof, living testament to even me. As I look here and I see a man that I knew uh, at the very beginning of this, and to see the growth that he's had, it's absolutely tremendous. And so I bring them on as validation that this lifestyle, this way of living can radically change everything about your life and help you level up in ways you never thought possible. So Colin, you're a great man. I, I know you're a good man because I know you, but I also know you're a good man because you got four beautiful women in yeah, your life, man. and I God do. does not give a man that many beautiful women if, <laughs> if, he's, if he is not a good human being. Yeah. So you yeah, are, amazing. Yeah, I would say you're blessed, but God, that's not the truth. You, right. you are, you have earned every goddamn bit of, 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 of success that you have. So yep. I love you, brother. I love you too, brother. And uh, for all those that are listening right now, um, you can find call, where can people find you, man? Where uh, if you want to give them opportunity, you can. If not, you can just yeah. So they, I mean, they connect with me on Facebook cool. or just directly at Colin Tally. Uh, and it's, 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 can you spell the name? Because it's not Colin. Yeah, it's Colin C U L L E N T A L L E Y. Yep. So that's Colin Colin Tally. You can find or, him on, on Facebook. Or if they're men, they can find me inside the Warrior Brotherhood Network at that's Workplace. Right. That's so, right. Uh, so yeah. So, so go ahead and find Colin. Or you could find me at, at a future Warrior Week, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, these people are motivated to do it. So yeah. uh, to find out more about how to live a 90-day uh, lifestyle, go over to ownthenext90.com. That's ownthenext90.com. Uh, put in your email. We've got some gifts for you guys. We've got some cool stuff that's going to come out, email content. Again, Colin, have a safe flight back, man. Thanks, I man. know it won't be long before uh, I see you and you're only a phone call away. That's right, brother. Until next time. This is uh, the California kid and the Raging Cajun saying, own your next 90. Own it. We out.